This time on Street Rat Garage, we are back at the auction and it is the height of tax season. Are we gonna be able to find a good deal on a car? Let's find out. Now, before we get started walking through the uh, auction there, we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. Some people have been dropping off after we get inside, not really wanting to see the auction flow. It can be a little bit boring. So what I'm gonna do is I already got all the numbers right here. The auction at this point is already over. I have all the numbers for the cars. So in between walking through these, I'll just go ahead and give you the price of each car and how much they went for. If you like that, let me know. If you don't like that and wanna go back, let me know that too. So we are back at the Indianapolis Police Impound and uh, they have about 100, 150 cars here. We're gonna take a look around and see if there's anything good to buy. I pre-checked the list and eh, there's a few decent ones and there's a few that are kind of interesting. So let's start looking at these things. Well, the very first thing I found interesting was this 2011, uh, what's the Ford Focus Fusion? Um, <laughs> There is no rubber on any of the wheels. These wheels were uh, run down, completely rubbed off, ran off the tires on each and every single wheel. So I think you know what happened here. I believe this was a police chase, police chase and they used some stop sticks, blew out all these tires and just sort of kept going. And it also has this dent right here in the quarter panel where I'm gonna guess it was pit maneuvered by a police car right in this area, ripping off the bumper. But uh, you can tell he went for a long ways on these tires. These, these rims are all damaged very heavily. And the window is broken out as well too. So probably got pit maneuvered and then he probably didn't get out of the car, so they probably drug him out this side after they broke the window out. It's going to be my, uh, my best guess on this. Um, this one's probably going to go really cheap, but I don't think this is one uh, we're going to want to buy. Now, that Ford Fusion, it went through for $350. That is pretty cheap, and it might have been a good deal to get that one, but we don't know what happened. He might have burned out the transmission and smoked, you know, everything underneath of the car. No idea what happened to that car. Definitely a police cha chase. $350 plus probably about $150 or so in processing fees. So about $500, a little bit over that. Not so bad, I guess. This right here is a 2009 so Acura. So this is one I think it's going to go high and people should not buy unless it, uh, for some reason, it actually goes for under a thousand dollars. This is going to be a gamble. There's no keys with this. You don't know how many miles are on it. It's obviously been crashed a little bit, but it's still, it looks good. It's still besides, you know, all the dents on it and the door being locked and the dent in the quarter panel. This side is a little bit rough, but this other side over here, much, much better. So if you don't come out here and look at this car, the pictures can be a little deceiving. And we know this is abandoned car, abandoned vehicle. That's what that stands for. And we have, uh, I saw marks on the tires. I think they were on this side. Were they over here? Yeah. It has the marks on the tires where it was tagged and left for, I believe, 72 hours before they can tow it away. And I bet this probably runs. Oh, this side's open. But uh, let's check in here. For some reason, this is weird. It's war on uh, the driver's seat, but on towards the passenger side. That's, that's a little bit unusual. So that still indicates it's gonna have some higher mileage. And as you can see, if you can see it, that brake pedal is worn. So that's telling me pretty, pretty well over 200,000 miles is gonna be my best guess. Now, sometimes these uh, have some timing chain issues if you don't do the preventive maintenance on them. So 
let's see what this one goes for. I'm gonna say it should go for under $1,000, but it's tax season. Somebody with some tax money is probably gonna look at only this side of the car and overbid on this car. Hopefully not, but let's find out what this car goes for. What it went for was $1,000 even, plus again, auction fees. I'm gonna guess about $200 on that, so 1200 and some odd dollars. Again, not so bad, but I'm just worried. If this car starts and runs, great deal. If there's anything wrong with it at all, not so much of a great deal. But uh, yeah, it went for less than what I thought it would, but enough that somebody could fix a few items on this car and be okay. Then next to it, we got a real hot rod. There's somebody checking out that Acura right now. That's the second person I've seen check it out. That thing's gonna go for too much money for what it is. But right now we're looking at this Dodge Charger 2012. Speaking of something that's gonna go for too much money, I imagine this was, is. It's got the V6 engine in it. Oh, look at that. It's got the drilled and slotted rotors on there. But definitely gonna go. There's been people checking it out. It's been hit on the side. Sort of scraped up. I imagine that's why it was brought in. Got in a little bit of a side swipe and they didn't get their car back. So now it goes up for auction. The Charger, it went for $2,700 plus auction fees. So $3,000, but it has a, uh, it has a rebuilt or a salvage title, it has a salvage title. So there's a little bit of paperwork that's gonna have to be done with that. But it, it runs and drives. It has some scrapes on it. I'd say okay deal, not a great deal, but okay. I'm surprised that these cars are going for this price during tax season. Check out this old Caprice, what's this? Oh, it's a 95, look dude, it's got 357,000 miles on it. I didn't think these cars would even run that long. I mean, they got the, probably has the LS engines, got the digital dash, well, the digital speedo, yeah. You know, it's not bad for 350,000 miles. You know, it's beat, but man, that's a, that's a lot of miles. Let's look under the hood. Well, it has the 5.7 in it, and um, you do not want to change the spark plugs and uh, work on this at all. This is, this is an engineering mess. I don't know who thought of this. It was a good engine back in the day, just as long as you didn't have to work on it. But, uh, yeah. But still, not a bad car, except for the fact that it got hit right, right in the Bondo. So, there's that. Sheared the axle clean off of there. That is a mess. But, somebody could put this car back together, and I bet they'll buy it for, I don't know, seven, eight hundred bucks. 1995 Chevy Caprice. Um, $325. Pretty, pretty good. Um, it will not go into gear is what it says it has keys so obviously and it says it's engine runs so you got a running car that just has the tire ripped off for you know about five hundred dollars with fees i call that a good deal well this is one i'm kind of interested in it's a 2001 buick that has 153,000 miles on it. it says it goes into gear but uh it's been hit right there pretty good the interior not so bad a shape i mean it's a little bit dirty. It's got some cigarette burns in the carpet, but uh, these cars run forever. And they are well built actually for what they are. This is a Park Avenue, so it was a, it was a little bit better car back in the day. This was, a, this was kind of pricey. It doesn't have any Calilite converters on it. That's a bummer. And it looks like it was brought in on an accident. I don't see that it was abandoned, but I would put like one bid in on this. If I can get this for 300 bucks, I would buy, I would buy this, but no more than that. It's got the 3,800 in it. Series two, I don't know what series two means. Anybody knows what that means, put it down in the comments. But uh, these, I just know the V6s run good. I mean, it's good for about 250,000 miles with limited problems. That bumper's bent in a little bit though. That's not good hmm well I'll still give it one hit on that I'll give it like a $250 bid on it if it goes 
goes for that, I'll buy it. If not, no, no big loss, but there's plenty of money just in parts for that car. And it says it runs and it says it goes into gear. So let's keep an eye on this. Let's see what this goes for. Now the Buick, it was only $225 plus, you know, fees. That would have been probably high threes, low $400 on that car. Maybe I should have bid on it more. I hit it one time. I was like $200 on it. And so my one, one person came and outbid me. Now, if I would have bid again, it would have been 250 Would he have bid again? I don't know. I decided to let it go because of how bad that bumper was bent on the front. But if I would have got it for the original $200 bid, we would have got it. But um, we got too many projects right now. Okay, well, this is a real mess. This is a 2011, 2010 Impala with 227,000 miles on it. Um, yeah, it looks like some major baby mama drama going on right here. Every window, well, not every window. That one's still intact. They forgot that one, but it's busted out with uh, what appears to be a baseball bat. Yipes, and the tail light lenses. It's got the tail light lenses too. You can see right there where they hit the body, striking on this, so, wow. They tried to get this one on this side, but uh, apparently they, they weren't good at uh, batting. Now, this is the one thing I worry about on these cars. These are, what, double pane and has a laminate in between there. This goes into the water. These are really hard to bust out, but apparently the back windows aren't. So, if you run off the road and into a retention pond and you're going under, I guess you're gonna have to try to get out the back windows. You definitely don't try to bust out the side windows on these cars. The 2010 Malibu, baby mama drama car. That was messed up. These windows are all busted out. It went for $425, about six high 600s uh, with the auction fees. I don't know about that one. The tires off of it for whatever reason, but it, need, it needed all the glass. I know the front windshield's like $250 to replace probably $250 for the back and maybe a hundred for each window, fours, $800,000, $1,000 plus for all the glass. So you're into it about 1500 bucks plus whatever else is wrong. You're into it, I don't know, probably $2,000 when you're all done. Is it worth it? Maybe, <laughs> but I definitely would not wanna do all of that work, so. That was definitely a pass. Now, if I was gonna gamble on a car, I think I would gamble on this one. This one is abandoned, abandoned vehicle right there. But it is a Subaru, which is a pretty good car. It's a 2006. It only has 137,000 cranks will not start. But what could be wrong with a Subaru with only 137,000 miles on it. Let's look on the inside. And it has seat covers on it. Yeah. Well, they were trying to, <laughs> trying to keep it nice. It has a dash cover on it. What's that hiding? Mm, a few chips there. Yeah, it's a little bit worn there. So it's got some sun damage. The other seat's in pretty good shape. Overall, this is not bad. I mean, 137,000 miles on a Subaru. I wonder what this is gonna go for. We are gonna have to put a bid on, on this. This is not bad. It is not rusty. See, it's got the marks on it from the abandoned vehicle. Maybe the fuel pump's bad. Let's see, the plate says 28 of 23. So it was driving not too long ago. So less than a year ago, it was out on the road one flat tire huh this is solid this is really really solid car we're gonna put a bid in on this let's see what this one goes for too the 2008 Subaru Outback I really wanted that car did not get it I allowed myself up to $1,000 including fees it went over that amount uh, I mean it sold for $825 on bid that was over a thousand dollars already I think my last bid was $800 and uh, 
it was only one more bid after that, but I set that limit of $1,000 and I didn't go over it. So that's what you got to do. You can't, you can't go over your allotted amount. So set your number and stick to it. I wish I would have got that car, but it just didn't happen. It's truck time and there's always Suburbans and Tahoes, 342,000 miles on an 04. Well, just tells you how good these LS engines are. Perfectly good 5.3 probably. It says that, yeah, it says it went into gear. It says starts and runs. Somebody's replaced the coil packs on it, so they did maintenance on this thing to keep it running good. Um, but it's incredibly ugly. This is, this is pretty awful. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is beat. <laughs> Somebody took it down, uh, down a pole or something. Blew out the back window, side window. It's got the Midwest rust already on it. I mean, if you really needed a truck, if you got this for seven, eight hundred bucks, it'd be okay. It's gonna run and drive for a while, but uh, I would use this for the engine and transmission, put in something else. It is completely trash. That is definitely 300,000 miles of wear, hauling people around. Even the back seats are trash. These uh, leather or fake leather seats they have in these uh, GM trucks, they do not hold up. Oh look, it had the uh, DVD player in it. This was fancy at one time, but it has been run into the ground. Hmm. Definite parts truck, or if you just really need something. 2004 Suburban, it sold for $600 plus auction fees. So 700 and almost $800 on that one. It's okay. It's okay deal. That's about what I figured it go for. And that's what it went for. So they got a fair deal. No, no great deal, but a fair deal. Well, this is a, it's a van. That's about all I can say about that. 1999 Dodge Ram with 178,000 miles on it. Hmm, that's abandoned too. It's got the slices on the tires. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. Uh, oh, the windows are painted. Wow, that has a real creeper, creeper van feel to it. I'm surprised it doesn't say free ice cream and puppies on the side of this one. Huh, okay, maybe we should just back away from this. 1999 Dodge Creeper van, it went for $550. So I think I bid like 300 bucks on it and quit because uh, just too many creepy, uh, creepy vibes on that one. So uh, yeah, next car. And another Tahoe, the other one's Suburban. This is a Tahoe, just a little bit shorter than a Suburban. 226,000 miles on that one. Um, it was in a bit of an accident. What is that? Oh, that is, that's the bumper off another car. <laughs> wow. It hit it so hard to rip the, the inner bumper completely off, completely off the other car. It's hung up on the, on the hook, the tow hook of this thing. So yeah, that's when they really built them. It took a big old bite out of that other car, but it did shift the doghouse over. So it need at least a new doghouse. Don't know if the frame's been on this one. And yeah, there's something wrong with this door. Yeah, well, I don't know. It doesn't seem to line up quite right. So the frame might be shifted just a little bit on this one, or it's just from where it smacked the door right there. Um, this is an iffy one. Put it back together or just use it for parts. I'm thinking probably a parts vehicle, but I think it could be put back on out put back out on the road what is this one like see this has a cloth interior in it this is so much better it's weird that the cloth holds up so much better than the uh, the fake leather this is way better interior than the other one I don't know I might change my mind on this this might be might be a good one to put back together again got the tow hook on it and everything 2005 Chevy Tahoe um, with a 5.3 in it. It went for $675, so about 800 bucks with auction fees on that one. That one wasn't bad. It had 226,000 miles on it, and it was a runner, 
runner and probably a driver says it went into gear. I would say if I was going to buy one, probably be, probably be that one. I mean, it, it was good for parts, really. The front end was really shifted over there. But uh, yeah, definitely a good LS swap candidate right there. Here's a nice, uh, nicely smacked in Chevy 1500. And this one has 311,000 miles on it. So uh, what engine does it have in it? I can't see inside of there, but uh, most likely the LS engine, but some of the six cylinders also had, you know, the ability to get up to some higher mileage. Yeah, it's not gonna open, is it? Oh, well, there it goes. Yep, it does have the little six cylinder in it, so not bad. I mean, that's why I like the GM vehicles. Such a, such a good mileage on it. It's got a good set of tires on it, and I like to have those for my truck. But uh, yeah, we're gonna pass on that one. I definitely, definitely would not want to put that back together again. And the 2007 Chevy 1500, it sold for $425, which is, eh, it's okay if you need some parts. I mean, I guess you could put that back together, but it has 300,000 miles on it and uh, a V6. So good parts truck. Okay, here's a, here's a Ford. A lot of people uh, get on me for not highlighting any Fords, but this is a 2002, no miles, no keys on it, but you do have uh, uh, a lot of carpet and wet uh, underlayment that you can roll around in. It's a four x four though, and it was uh, plated in 23, so it hasn't been sitting for that long. It doesn't have a key, but it doesn't, is it abandoned? Um, yeah, it's abandoned vehicle. No catalytic converters on it either. So, ooh, what is up with this interior? <laughs> oh, what is it? Oh, King Ranch, that's why. So this, I guess, is real, real leather interior. Yep, yeah, it's definitely real leather. So, yeah, this was, uh, must have been a pricey option back in the day and i bet it looked really nice but if you don't take care of uh some of this quality leather it winds up looking like this this is basically you know your jean or not jean jacket your leather jacket material you need to take care of it just like you would your jacket or else it winds up looking like this that is nasty 2002 Ford F-150 King Ranch Edition. Now, it only went for $325. It didn't have any keys. They don't know if it runs, but King Ranch, I think that is probably gonna become a collector's truck, and that might have been a good one for us to buy. Again, we just have too many projects, but um, I almost wish I would have bought that one. All right, for people doing the LS swap, this is your guy right here. A 2011 Tahoe with 121,000 miles on it. 121,000 miles on an LS engine is nothing. This would be a perfect swap into my uh, 69 uh, Chevelle. I would throw 200 shot of nitrous on this, throw that engine in there, and uh, spray it all day long without any problems. This is uh, what was a nice truck. So. It was taken care of if it only has that many miles. It's the same year as my truck, and my truck has 430,000 miles on it. So I'd almost buy this just for the rims, the engine, and park this out. I mean, good tailgate, good bumper, good doors. Uh, I would say there's probably, let's look at the interior. Yeah, look at this interior. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with this. It's a little bit dirty but everything else is fine. There's uh, probably a thousand dollars worth of interior parts, probably another thousand dollars worth of body parts, drivetrain parts, sell the rear end, they go out sometimes. So $2,000 parted out. You have the engine, the transmission, all the wiring for your LS swap. This would be a good deal if it goes cheap. The 11 Chevy Tahoe. $1,750 is what it sold for, plus fees, over 
it's a good deal. It's still a good deal. I said that you can part that out and probably make $2,000. So somebody's either going to buy that, part it out, make their money back, use the drivetrain for a project, or they have another Tahoe that needs some parts. I mean, had a good engine, good transmission, good rear end. All the interior is good. The doors back are just fine. You could, uh, if you had one that was damaged or beat up, you could revive your Tahoe with this one. Or like I said, sell off the parts and you have a free drivetrain there. This place is absolutely full of LS engines. What's this one, a Tahoe as well? 290,000 miles on this one. I'm sure it has a 5.3 in it as well, but this was abandoned vehicle, so we don't know if it runs or not. That would be a bit of a gamble. 2004 Chevy Tahoe went for $725, uh, about 900 bucks. This one was this one was good. I, well, good. It was okay. It's a, it's a fair price. You could probably make a few dollars on it if you know everything's okay on the truck. It says it runs and it went into gear. So if everything's good on this truck, you can make a few dollars on it or just something for you to drive around. So it went for what it should have went for. Another Tahoe. No catalytic converters on it. And it has 212,000 miles on it, which is still pretty good. And that one runs and it went into gear as well. Is this a two wheel drive Tahoe? Huh. If it's a two wheel drive, well, I don't think it'd have the uh, 4L80 in it. It'd probably have a 6L80. Let's look under here real quick. Um, Nope. It's a four-wheel drive. There's a transfer case. It's kind of rusty under there, too. But good engine and transmission. Well, good engine and a transmission that you can sell off to somebody who's a 4L60E went out. Rear end, still, you know, $1,000 worth of parts all, you know, over this vehicle. Use the engine and transmission out of it. Oh, another creeper van. Let's just keep walking. The 2003 Tahoe, it went for $700. So it went into gear, it ran, it had an LS engine in it as well. It had 212,000 miles on that one. Again, it went with what it should have went for. It went for what it should have went for. It went for a fair price, let's say that. So it's fair, it's not great, it's not overpriced. Okay, deal. Well, some people wanted to see some cars as well. I've been forgetting about the cars a little bit. So, 2010 Volkswagen. Is this a Jetta? Oh, it only has 59,000 miles on it. It starts and goes into gear. This is a pretty good one right here. I wonder if it's been wrecked. Why was this brought in? Apparently for being incredibly tacky. The Fast and Furious days are over. I mean, what... What are these things for? I mean, why, why do people put these on here? And I'm sure there's some sort of race car purpose for it. Like there's a race car purpose for this wing, but it does absolutely no good on this vehicle. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much gonna fly out if you actually get this up to hundred miles an hour. <laughs> oh, what's that? I don't know what that says, El Valley? Is that what it says? Somebody correct me on that and tell me what that means. But, uh, oh look, the brakes are not even really rusted up, so this has not been in here, in here very long. What's it like on the inside? Uh, it's pretty clean. I think it was taken care of. Oh, what was that? Air fresheners, yeah, it does smell pretty good. It's got a crack in the windshield, though. That's not bad. This would, uh, this would be a good car right here. This is good teenage teenager's car that's probably who was driving it around definitely 2010 VW Jetta with only how many miles was that 59,959 miles 60,000 miles on a 2010 uh, Jetta I bid on that and bid on it and bid on it and uh, it just kept going up and up uh, just that ugly wing that was on the back of it I mean that's the only thing that's really spoiling it uh, but that comes off easily but I bid to the point where the, the uh, price with the fees would have been $2,000 and then I quit. So uh, at this point, it's about 
22 dollars $2,300 with the fees on this car, which is still, a, I think that's still a good deal. These cars are going a lot cheaper than I had thought for tax season. I'm, I'm thinking people don't have the money that they, uh, they had last year or any of the years before that because these cars should be a lot higher than what they are. I think it's a fair deal. And we can't forget about the mom van. There's always a, a Chrysler van here. This one has power, will not crank 2,174,000 miles on it. That is not bad. I just, I don't know if I can buy a Chrysler minivan or not. <laughs> it's so fancy on the inside though. Got the little old school type clock on it right above the, uh, the fancy radio. But, uh, I mean, it looks good, but Chrysler's reputation was not great. It's got third row seating that folds down. It's got all the fancy console stuff on it. I mean, well, that's a really good mom van right there. Our <coughs> soccer dad as well, I guess. Not bad. They came back and got their plate for why, whatever reason it was towed in. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I can get behind this, but it would make somebody a good van. Now this 2011 Town & Country, it only sold for $600. I was gonna bid on this. There was a glitch in the system and it went from being available to being sold just in a few seconds. And I, I couldn't even get a bid in on it. So uh, whoever pre-bid on this, they got a smoke and dill on this van especially if it just starts up and runs. There's way, way more than $600 in parts on this van, even if it doesn't run. This was, this was a good score right here. I wish I had, uh, kind of wish I had pre-bid. I pre-bid on a lot of cars just in case this happens. Almost every auction, there is a glitch and it just, bam, right to sold for whoever had the last bid on it. That was crazy. And another car that's always here, a Hyundai. And uh, what was it brought in here for? It's a 2012 with 151,000 miles on it. Winning gear right there. Ignition broke. It was stolen. It's missing the door handle. How'd they even get in this? So let's go look at that ignition. Hyundai, easiest car to steal. Easiest modern car to steal. Yeah, there it is. All that you have to do is rip that off stick a screwdriver in there and bam you are away in your fancy hyundai i bet this goes cheap i would say fifteen hundred dollars but it's tax season so being tax season i'm gonna guess i'm gonna guess twenty five hundred dollars because it's the sporty hatchback style is that what you do you still call these hatchbacks fastbacks tuner style whatever you call it but this runs this drives it's got the tuner style to it it's been wrecked once in the front already but i bet this brings a lot of money i'm gonna say it's worth fifteen hundred dollars but i bet it brings twenty five hundred dollars or higher let's find out well the 2012 uh hyundai it brought $1,550 right there on what it should have brought. But uh, of course there's auction fees. So it's more like uh, $1,700, 1750, maybe a little bit more than that, but it, it sold for a fair price as well. That's pretty much what I thought it would sell for. Actually, I thought it would go higher because of tax season, but again, tax season is not what it used to be apparently. So let's go out there and buy some cars, I guess. Yeah, tricks this thing out. I'm not exactly sure what is going on with this uh, 2007 Dodge Charger that only has uh, 120,000 miles on it, but uh, yeah, they were creative, let's say. But uh, this one, it interests me. It is an abandoned vehicle too, so that's a, a bit of a gamble. But man, look, what is going on with all of this? This is, it's just awful. What is on the inside? Hopefully it's not on the inside as well, but uh, it's pretty good on the inside. The interior is what you would expect from a 120,000 mile car. So 
not bad on this one if it doesn't go too high we can throw some numbers on it i mean it's only a v6 car but that's a good uh good text time car we get rid of all that and the world's ugliest uh dodge charger 2007 with a v6 in it 600 bucks that was fine i i missed bidding on this one because uh I took a break. I was getting tired and there was some boring cars coming up. I took a break. I come back like uh, one car after that one had sold or I would have put a bid in on that and we would have probably owned that ugly thing. But uh, it didn't have very many miles on it. It was what, uh, 120,000 miles? I mean, cranks won't start. What could be wrong with it? Not much. Maybe a crankshaft sensor. Maybe it was out of gas. I bet that was a simple, simple fix and I think somebody scored a good deal on this car. This is the second week in a row for a neon. So this is this is not a fancy neon, but uh, people like these apparently. I don't know if they like the plain style, but those uh, SRT versions, is it SRT? Those are apparently well sought after. And this one's, uh, this is really plain and boring, but if you like it, more power to you. 2001 Dodge Neon, $300. So um, that one didn't have any, I don't think that one had a key with it, did it? No, it didn't have a key. It only had 93,000 miles on it. It was uh, wrecked a bit there in the front, but if it come in on accident, you know it runs. Uh, it just didn't have a key for it. 300 bucks, $500, almost $500 with uh, fees on it, I guess. If you like Neons, that would have been just a, fine deal if it ran and it drives and you could go back and forth to work good deal good commuter car didn't get hurt on that one so here's the winner right here this is a 2015 mustang and uh it's beat down <laughs> it looks like it had some baby mama drama too or something's going on there but uh overall mm, kind of solid just missing the rear bumper off the back of it looks like it's been missing it for a while because they wired the uh tag on the back of it wouldn't seem like it'd be that hard to uh find a bumper and toss back on there but this thing is uh it's filthy which is what you want from a, a mustang <laughs> and apparently it has a lot of miles on it how many miles does it say a hundred and sixty nine thousand yeah, that's a lot of miles and uh it smell, oh man, it smells in here. Oh my gosh. That is, it's nasty on the inside of this car. Oh, that's disgusting. Can't get the hood open because the latch is jacked up. So I'm just going to assume it's a V6 car. No badging or anything on it. Not sure how you can tell. Or could it be that EcoBoost? I don't know. It'll be in the description. We'll look at it later. But definitely uh definitely gonna go high so we'll look at it i seriously doubt if we're gonna put a bid in on this okay the mustang 2015 some of you probably skipped ahead just to see what this one went for didn't you well go back and watch the rest of the video too but four thousand fifty dollars and it did have the 2.3 liter automatic transmission in it so uh it looks good <laughs> i'm not a fan of that engine we couldn't get the hood up to see it at the lot, but there she is right there, a little, little 2.3. Actually, it's kind of looks big in there. Almost looks like a V8, as wide as that top is there. But it says 2.3 in the description. Um, it was so nasty on the inside, but that body is in such good shape, except for that back uh, bumper cover. $4,050, that's going to be around $1,000 in auction fees on that car. 5000 a little over $5,000 for a, a 15 Mustang with 160 some thousand miles on it. Is that a good deal? Do you? I don't know. I don't know. I kind of think it's a good deal if nothing else wrong, is wrong with it. If it runs, if it drives, if it shifts fine, you find the bumper cover, clean that thing up, patch up some of that interior. I think it's a good deal. I wanted to bid on that, but... I just watched it. It was going up and up and up and up and up, but finally it leveled off at 4,000 and uh, that was just too much. I saw those auction fees. It's like, no, I'm, 
I would not buy it just because of the auction fees. But uh, somebody got an okay deal on that one. And for the Dodge people, we have a Dodge Challenger. It's a 2012 with uh, 200,000 miles on that one. Yeah, it been beat up a little bit on the front. Uh, looks pretty good on the inside. You got the aftermarket stereo, all that fun stuff. It just has the V6 in that one. But it has the go fast tube, so that's another minus five horsepower right there. But it'll be interesting to see what it goes for at tax season. The 2012 Dodge Challenger with a crunched front end there that looks like it had been replaced at one time and not well. The door didn't shut very good, but it runs and drives. So uh, $2,650. So close to another $1,000 in auction fees on that one. So about $3,600. I think I would have paid the extra money and bought the Mustang instead. So newer, newer Mustang, uh, probably about the same power range, I would guess. And uh, definitely the Mustang was a better car for the money. But somebody wanted a Challenger and they bought it. I don't call that one a good deal or a fair deal. I think they overpaid a little bit for the condition this vehicle is in. So we have a pretty wide variety of cars to go look at today. A lot of these are just, there's a lot of crashed cars in here this week for some reason. But yeah, I'm gonna say that Charger goes high. I'm gonna say that Hyundai goes high. I bet a lot of these go high, but I'm just interested in that Subaru right there. If I'm gonna take anything home, it's gonna be the Subaru. I'm willing to give that one a gamble. Well, that is the end of our cars today. So if you like the way this one is four banded, just going back and forth and the prices, and between the auction, let me know. If you want to do it a different style, let me know that too. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Street Rat Garage. Until next time.